All right, guys. Today I'm going to show you um, the three different formats that I um, render some of my videos. Uh, number one will be the MP4 format that I use to uh, upload to YouTube or Vimeo. The second um, format will be Blu-ray, and then the third format is uh, DVD um, for regular DVDs. So, first of all, I want to start off by showing you the project properties. Now, if you see saw my video regarding uh, my T2I settings, I mentioned that I always shoot at 24 frames per second, 1080p. Uh, and because I do so, my project property template is the same. It's the template of HD 1080p, uh, 24 frames per second. Um, the field order uh, with this particular template is progressive scan. Uh, pixel aspect ratio is at 1.0 square. Uh, again, frame rate 24, or in this case 23.97. Pixel format 8 bit, mm, deinterlace method none, and uh, the audio portion of it I keep it as is. I don't make any changes. All this other stuff I don't change. So, this is my particular template that I use to um, render or to edit all my videos, which again I only record at 24 frames per second. So, let's go ahead and um, begin with the render settings for to upload uh, to Vimeo or YouTube. Okay, so this is my render settings if I were to upload to Vimeo or YouTube. Um, I go ahead and use the Sony AVC codec, okay? And let me go ahead and show you the um, the particular uh, template that I use to render out. Now this is my own custom template. Um, now if you wish to do uh, the frame size or the template of 720p you can choose that one or the 1080p uh, full 1920 by 1080p. I choose the 1440 by 1080. It, the, 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 file, uh, the size of the files aren't too large so um, and I think the quality is a little bit better than if I were to do the 720p. Uh, but anyhow, the frame, say, frame size is high definition 1440 by 1080. Uh, the profile, baseline, frame rate 24 or 23.97. Field order, non-progressive, pixel ratio 1.33. Now this is important, the bit rate, okay? Um, if you were to, if I were to upload a highlight video uh, shot at, uh, you know, 24 frames per second, and if I were to do the bit rate of, say, 4,000, well, unfortunately, because it's slow, it's a low bit rate. A lot of the video, the more, the majority of the video, especially during uh, a lot of motion scenes, um, you would see some pixelation. Now, I all my videos are rendered out at ten or uh, ten million uh, bit rate, and um, my videos look sharp, no pixelation, and I think that's that's my recommendation if you guys are uploading something. You know, like a highlight video type thing up on on uh, YouTube or uh, Vimeo, uh, and again, all my videos are at ten. Now, this particular video that I'm editing right now, that I'm screen capturing, it's gonna probably be at ten, or I'm sorry, four. I'll probably go down here and change that to four, and uh, you know, and because there's no motion really in this video, it's not gonna be necessary. So, and also by doing um, ten, your file, the the size of your file is gonna be a little bit larger. Uh, than if you were to do four, for example. Uh, but again, the quality is excellent, and uh, all my videos are done at 10. So, now the encode mode, I use the CPU only. I, I don't use automatic. Um, my GPU, my video card is not that great. So, um, and I have a six core AMD processor. So, using the CPU only always works for me. Uh, under the audio, I keep it at uh, 128 uh, bit rate and uh, all the other settings I leave. Uh, format, again, this is for Vimeo or YouTube. I keep it at MP4, and uh, and that's it. So this is my template to render out to uh, to get a, a, a for uploading to Vimeo or YouTube. Now, the following is a template uh, to that I use to render out 
uh, for Blu-ray, okay? If I were to do the Blu-ray, okay, one of the first things that I do is I say I go into the MPEG-2 codec, the um, main concept, and um, I have a custom template, which is, I call it the best Blu-ray 24P, and then just go into the settings. Uh, again, main concept, MPEG-2, and you have here the um, output type, MPEG-2. Now, again, it's 1440 by 1080, frame rate of 24, um, field order progressive. Now, the video, video quality down here, um, as you can see, it's at 31. It's always at the highest. I think uh, by default, it's somewhere in the middle, I believe, but I always have it at the highest. And again, the constant bit rate, because it's, it is a Blu-ray, you want to go high on this uh, bit rate. Uh, and I always have it at 25. Um, I think I've done 30 uh, to do some of my videos, some of my Blu-rays. But 25 is about the right size, and it doesn't. Uh, the difference between 25 and 30 is not that not that big of a difference. So 25 works for me. Um, under the advanced video, all that's left alone. I don't touch that. Under audio, um, you know, I just the bit rate. That's the only thing that I can sometimes go back and change, either 224 or 256. But for the most part, it's always at 224. And uh, now here's the thing: I author my videos with Adobe Encore, um, and I separate the audio and the video. Uh, and I have it check mark right here: save as separate elementary streams. Um, I do this because I once ran into an issue where my videos um, were not syncing the audio with the with the video, so uh, now I separate both audio and video, and I can I find that I can sync the video in Encore, and it always works. It's always worked, never had any problems. So ever since it's been like a couple of years, I've just been doing it that way, where I separate the audio and the video. So um, you don't have to do that. However. I just ran into a problem and to avoid it I just do the separate audio video now okay guys so that was the um, blu-ray template to render out for blu-ray uh, uh, videos now the following is going to be the template for a regular DVD um, for regular DVD I also have a custom template I call it DVD best um, let's go into the settings. Um, same main concept MPEG-2 format. Um, output output type at DVD. The width 720 by 480. Frame rate is at 30. Um, aspect ratio 16 by 9. Uh, field order is progressive. Video quality is the same. It's all the way to the high. Uh, again, this is important. The constant bit rate on my videos, my DVDs, it's always at nine. Okay, nine million. Um, you can do four thousand, four million. You can go ten, um, but the working with Adobe Encore at and having it um, rendered out to nine um, bits per second, uh, nine million, it works out for me perfect, and the videos look excellent. I mean, I've had a couple of people even ask if if it was a Blu-ray or a DVD because the quality is just really awesome. So. So at nine million, that's what I keep it at. So for the and it's always constant. Never I never choose variable. It's always constant bit rate. Um, as with um, the Blu-ray under advanced video, I leave it alone. Under audio, I do keep it at about one twenty-eight. Sometimes I do go up to about two twenty-four. For the most part, on under for DVD, it's always about one twenty-eight. And I do the same thing as far as um, saving this as separate elementary streams. Again, I save the audio and the video separate and again I do it because I know I had issues syncing my videos with Adobe Encore um, having it separate works perfect and um, and so that's it guys uh, this these are my settings my render settings for um, um, when I'm working with um, Sony Vegas and um, you know as you can tell oh one more thing I don't color correct my videos um, None of these clips here have any on the timeline here. There's no plug-in in here. Uh, only thing I did, however, on one particular scene, let me see where it is. At. It's right here. It's because it was a little bit on the dark side. So what I did add is the uh, levels plug-in, okay? And if I take that out, you could tell that it's dark. So by increasing a little bit of the gamma and, and brightness, I guess it just made it a lot better. 
and that's it that's the only plugin that I inputted on this particular entire video uh, the rest of the clips have no plugins um, no color correction no white balance correction um, and again I, I avoid I tried to get the shot right the first time just saves me a lot of time when I'm you know um, editing my videos and uh, and just uh, hold on let me take out the audio real quick so yeah so that's what I do I don't color correct my videos uh, I don't find it necessary I'm not into giving it that Hollywood type color feel um, you know I've never had a request I've actually had a couple people tell me not not to change the colors of the video they like the way my videos come out and so um, it just saves me a lot of time um, don't have to go out and search for plugins or buy plugins so you know that's just my style of editing and uh, rendering my videos uh, and so far so good I've had clients call me up and you know you know mention how good the videos look and I've had a lot of you guys on YouTube and Vimeo comment on how good the videos uh, uh, look so so I appreciate it guys if you like my videos subscribe um, I probably will be coming out with the video showing uh, some tricks and tips on how to use a steady cam whether it's a professional steady cam or, um, or a, a do-it-yourself steady cam like the one I have but uh, appreciate it for all you guys that have subscribed um, if you're interested in watching this video it's called the 15th uh, the quinceanera uh, sweet 15 highlight reel it's up on both my uh, YouTube channels and my Vimeo channel um, or you can check it out at jmzfilms.com um, and it's got a lot of steady cam work um, so check it out guys thanks a lot and uh, you guys have a good day bye